Hey folks, it's Maxwell here and welcome to a new TW9 video. You're here for episode 3 of the creative season series with 21st Century Wrestling or 21st Century Wrestling. Also just realised as well, 21CW, 21 Maxwell. Well, it all makes sense. But anyway, we're here for the Steel Cage Challenge. It's our first pay-per-view on Premier Pay UK TV, so we won't get booted off the network for a terrible show here. But looking forward to it, it's only 11 segments, it's 6 matches, 5 angles, and it's just over 2 hours of run time. But I'm quite happy with what we've put together. And then it's going to give us 4 weeks to start properly getting into this. So, without further ado, let's crack on with the Steel Cage Challenge. So here it is folks, it is in front of 14,764 fans in the old Kent Road Arena. We start off are greeted by our lead play-by-play -play announcer, Steve Smith, who says Hello everyone and welcome to 21st Century Wrestling Steel Cage Challenge, where tonight many of our matches will be contested within a solid steel cage. Not all of them, but most. We have many championships on the line, a mega six-man main event with an unknown third man for Team Tommy Cornell, and we also have Wade Orson defending the 21st Century Wrestling World Championship against Lee Burton and his first title defence. So some big matches there, of course it'll be Carnell, Mastravers and an unknown partner against the faction, the House of Business led by Edward Cornell. So really intrigued to see how this goes down with the third member. Crowded at the end was Simmering, a segment rating of 75 and our future is now storyline advances but lost heat. Our opening contest was a decent matchup, and it saw the Demolishers from the King's Men defeat absolutely flawless in 1018 when Langton Herring pinned Lance Martin with a double choke slam. It gave the Demolishers their fourth defence of the 21st Century Tag Team Championships. Wrestling rating was a 61, crowd rating was also a 61, and the segment itself got a 58. You can see there in terms of in-ring performance, the weak link there probably was Compton Valance, but it is fairly level. Uh, the tag division still in advance, and it also gained heat. But yeah, it gives a, a good start to the King's Men as the Demolishers pick up the W. Next up, we had a, another tag team match, and this one saw Crouching Storm, Hidden Sifu take on the Men of Steel. And it was a decent match up here that saw Crouching Storm, Hidden Sifu pick up the win. In 11.40 when Ricky Storm pinned Mark Adonis with a double back fist. Mass Hulk was a weak link, struggling to keep up with everyone else's performance. That's good to note that Sifu and Storm will put in good performances. Mark Adonis will put in good performances and Mass Hulk will maybe look at his stats and see where we can position him within that particular faction. The wrestling rating was a 66, the crowd rating was a 63, the segment itself a 67 and unarmed and dangerous has advanced so we've got a bit of depth in the tag division which is always good we can mix things up so the open challenge for war machine was accepted by joe simpson and it was a decent match here that saw war machine defeat joe simpson in 8 17 when he escaped the cage i made this the storytelling match of the night because it was basically protecting war machine but at the same time it was like big dominant guy against a guy up and coming like joe simpson and it just resulted in a bit of a domination. So, third defence of the 21st century United Kingdom Championship. A 56 play the 66 in terms of in-ring performance. The wrestling rating a 61, crowd rating 66. A segment was just a 54. So it's getting used to, because the actual ability of the wrestler is on a different page from the popularity. It's like having to look back and compare, like, he's really over, but maybe not the best in-ring. And then you try to find what mesh he's well going forward but because uh, there's a lot that's maybe not technically great that we might need to work on but of course the company is more based towards popularity just uh, after it we see war machine and the rest of the king's men backstage and he decides to pick up the mic quick promo from him a few words from him complimenting valance and herring as well he says what a night it's been for the king's men three men two championship matches two wins all titles defended successfully. Get used to it. This is what we do. We destroy and we win. 21st century wrestling. Line them up, boys. Because we will knock them all down. 
So 60 segment for the promo. War Machine just showing their dominance with obviously all those championships. And yeah, can I get something different from Simmering? We'll find out as the show progresses. We had the big brawl which we didn't put in the cage because I do want to try and maybe extend this feud a bit longer. But it was about that had some good heat and decent wrestling as Rolly Muckle Truck defeated Bedlam in 956 by submission with Phil Nelson. 71 and a 73 is pretty decent. The Bedlam storyline continues. 72 wrestling, 73 crowd and 75 overall. Actually probably overachieved because I didn't think many were great. Brawling was good but it wasn't quite at a high level. So yeah, fairly delighted with that. Uh, after it, Rolly picks up the win and he celebrates halfway up the ramp. But Bedlam is going mental. Is it just a case of he's furious? Is it just a case of he's lost the, the match by submission? If they tap out or he was going to pass out. He's now under the, the ring apron. He's grabbed a chair and he's smacking it all around the ringside area. He's going mental. Here come road agents, security, just to try and get the chair off him and get him back to the backstage area. So, pretty poor improvising. I think a lot of our stuff I've just done improvised. Maybe some people need to be scripted. So, that's something I'll look at as time goes on. Because again, with the angles, it's getting used to that. That everything will start at that, unless you put it obviously in your product. But 57, but yeah, the plan is for these two to go to war. At uh, World War. Uh, some sort of stipulation match. That's not a cage match. Like everybody else. Yeah, next up, the World Championship was on the line. Between Wade Orson, the first title defence against Lee Button. Yep, this didn't mean event, and I probably should have made it do so. But super matchup. Wade Orson defeats Lee Button in 2504 when Wade Orson escaped the cage. During the matchup, we also had Forrest Charmer running and attack Orson, obviously because of all the stuff that happened on the Charmer effect on the last episode. And yeah, first defence for Orson, 89 for him. Button with 74 off his game. The storyline advances as well. Still simmering. But an 81, 83, 82, I'll take. Uh, so these guys can pretty much main event and it's up to us to establish them both at the top. But it's time for your main event. Who is going to be the mystery fub man? Because that is first announced. And here we are. The five men are in the ring. Who's going to be the third man? It won't in this realm be the Hulkster. Of course, but the music plays. Here he comes. It's the SWF legend with an FNE. E. Here comes a rock star. This is Jack Bruce. Out of retirement, pretty much hobbling, but with this overness, I felt it was a big name I had to bring in just to try and help us continually get better segments and, and hopefully better matches to keep our TV deal. And hopefully, we can work on everyone else while these guys carry our main event scene. But yeah. Debuts the Rockstar gimmick, 85, he improvised well, commentary probably could have been better, so that's something we do need to improve. So that means your main event, six man tag. Good matchup, Adam Matrevers, Tommy Cornell and Jack Bruce defeat the House of Business, Edward Cornell, Victor Beskov and Yuri Alikov in 2042 when Jack Bruce pinned Alikov with a New York Minute, Alikov the weak link, simmering for the crowd heat. 72 for the wrestling, 76 for the crowd rating, 78 for the segment. I had a creative finish. And I used that, and it seems to have been a success, so that's good. You can see here as well, in-ring performance, the Cornells are way ahead. Bruce and Beskov just behind, and Jack Bruce getting better. He's finished. Storyline gains heat, but realistically, Jack Bruce should really probably going to use more soft segments rather than in-ring matches, but hopefully... This might actually get us the pop pack that we lost in the UK. So that's an 85 for the best segment, a 78 for the, the main event match. And we finish the show off. It's all over. Team Tommy Cornell picks up the win and he celebrates with Jack Bruce and Adam Matre uh, Matravers. Cornell is furious and you can hear him shouting, you still won't get to me, Tommy. And Bruce, I'm going to injure that knee for good so you can't walk again. He's livid. He's raging. But overall, 84, storyline continues and gains heat. A lot of good performances there. Everyone came across well, apart from Edward Cornell, who struggled when going off script.
Ah, so we we are getting heavily penalised by not having enough hot storylines. So that's on me. So I think actually that would have been probably right up there. But that's heavily penalised us down to a 70. So I'm going to have to watch because if we keep getting those kind of ratings, we're going to get dropped for TV very, very quickly. Which is going to be a massive pain. So the good thing is, we now have like a, a long slate to uh, the next pay-per-view and that's going to give me a chance to properly get 7 or 8 storylines so at least 5 of them are hot going forward. But overall, considering I've only two shows to, to learn a few people and to put stuff together, uh, the only reason is to say that main evented over the World Championship was purely for the debut of Jack Bruce. So hopefully Orson Burton and others can make some good stuff happen going forward. But thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll now be on the road to the World War. Uh, World War. Yeah, I think that's the next one. And as I say, thanks for watching. Take it easy. It'd be like it'd be much appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.